So hi everybody. Um, so uh, welcome to the MacPy Spring 4 review. This, uh, this is Spring primarily focused on uh, fixing defects, although some feature-based work snuck in there as well. Uh, so um, let's start with the platform bits. Uh, so yeah, obviously we've uh, in the platform fixed various bugs. So one of the bugs that came up over development of ISSU was uh, some some bugs when configuring clusters using the REST API. So the first two issues are fixes for those. So we got the uh, Docker test working correctly again. And then we made some changes to Mastership recently that uh, caused some bugs in the device manager, which uh, seven two four three fixes that issue, and then. There was a small upgrade to Atomics, so most of this is focused on ensuring that uh, changes in the next release are going to break the ability to do offline upgrades. And so there's one last issue that's still in progress that we're still working on, which is the uh, issue with flows that are stuck in pending end. Yeah, state. and if I can interject here, this one is actually related to some of the new defect that you submitted with the links missing. It's mm -hmm. all tied to the same thing, and it's basically uh, an issue with the mastership, but not in a intra-node sense, but mostly in how the OpenFlow provider retains the state of the retains the role associated for each device. Basically, short long story short, is all controllers think that they're in standby mode. There's a master, which is what's responsible for pending add, and uh, which is also what's responsible for uh, uh, inability to emit packet uh, trace. Mm -hmm. uh, traces and hence using links. So um, uh, still clearly work in progress. I'm hoping that will be uh, closed in a couple of days. Sure. All right. So for the ISSU brigade, we didn't have much work to do this sprint, more just uh, documenting what work we've done. So this documentation is still in progress. I'm hoping to have it done basically before next week, this weekend. Uh, documenting the ISSU process and offline upgrades and uh, putting together some demos. So I'm going to demo uh, ISSU at the end of this. Cool. Excellent. Uh, so, yeah, in terms of a uh, bug fix, we fixed a little problem we had when we were trying to connect to BMV2. But other than that, we added new features in the sprint. Uh, most important, we added support for multiple uh, controller instances. So we replaced few stores that before were local with a distributed version of them. And we also did some adjustments to the UI to support the new uh, uh, pipeline models. Support for P4 anti meters is still in progress. Uh, this is a task managed by the, by the community. Excellent. Yeah, next is uh, Fabri.p4. Uh, so basically, we have lots of story to support basic functionality for the Fabri, for a trellis use case. For example, uh, basically, like simple peg in, peg out, um, and uh, do the L2 unicast, and also do the L3 unicast for assembly for a different leaf. And currently, uh, I'm working on. Uh, make the favorite app before support to final chip. And uh, also there's a uh, common member I forgot to put this, uh, help me to test uh, some integration, like integrate with uh, DSCP relay. And also if another test is integrated with VROther. Um, Those are in progress. Uh, the VROther is not, but DSCP relay, I think he's working, working on it. By the community. There yeah, by the community okay. member. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Still do four. Uh, yeah, so we, we separated. We now have a main section about P4 and time and then the use cases. Uh, we have initial P4 code for INT in magnet telemetry. It was contributed by Dong Wang. Uh, then I started doing some exploratory work with BNF for floating, especially in the service packet gateway for MCORP. And then under review, we have the but build real for GNMI uh, Proto. The problem there is that we're trying to align the version we use, the version of Proto buff in gRPC we use for P4 and time with that for GNMI. We're trying to find a nice way to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you sure. know, without creating a jar hook. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and then there's a story in the review about uh, uh, um, the serializer for the IMT packet adder. Uh, it's from community. It's, yeah, it's yeah. from community. And then still in progress with working with Barefoot regarding how can we add Genomai for Tofino. Brian is helping on that. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Uh, you tell you going to provide this one? So, Dynamo Chef is like, we now have support for directly complete, uh, configuring each individual device configuration to rest conf. And the second one item is about so, sort of reverse engineering the existing Dynamo Config store to analyze what the problem was and trying to come up with a new version of the design to address few. Support a few use cases brought by DT and whoever's kind of thing. And the last one is about improvement of Yang support. Let's see how I say. Yang one point one has some stuff to put any data, and we mostly have that support, I guess. So it's on the Onos tool side, but I don't think it's integrated no, 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 into no, the Onos, Onos runtime. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 <clears throat> All right. And just as a side note, the team is going to be going through planning for the demo at ONS. Mm -hmm. And that will be primary uh, workload of uh, the next release. All right, on the web UI, um, as far as I know, I haven't had a chance to synchronize with uh, Stephen to, uh, to provide this update because I sent the uh, slide pointer a bit too late for him to update it. But I've checked the review log, and uh, right now there were no defects, pending defects for the UI for the Mac by release. And so the only work that was really happening was the background work uh, on, on top of two for uh, the next release. Um, similarly, on our Lion Brigade, there's just ongoing work. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, we're adding French language support, which is currently under review. There is a Gaelic review for this. And the Greek language translation is uh, currently in progress and will be uh, submitted in the coming weeks. Uh, one thing I want to point out here is we still need to have uh, uh, some, to recruit some resources to help us with the internationalization part of the work because the localization, we have translators, but uh, the code has to be structured in a way where it can be localized. And mm -hmm. as you can see, we have uh, about a yeah, um, half of our table views still need to be translated, so they need to be made so that they can support international uh, internationalization. Organization. So we're we're lacking in that area, but I have a feeling that once we get somebody to do this, it'll, it's a fairly cookie um, cookie cutter type process. So I'm hoping we can uh, sort of close that gap for the next release. On a virtualization brigade, uh, Claudine couldn't make this meeting, but she uh, provided this update. Uh, so uh, first of all, a scenario was created for STC to be able to test the virtual networks. Um, there were some uh, defect fixes in the open flow agents um, where when processing the flow mod messages. And currently still under review are um, is a skeleton for virtual gateway and uh, uh, per tenant logger tracer for the open flow agent as well. As well as, of course, a meter stats request uh, support. And this is open flow agent uh, for the virtual networks, just to clarify. On a gRPC brigade, uh, I don't think Jem has had a chance to update it. Uh, so, based on the reviews in progress, it's just ongoing work, but nothing really that funnels directly towards the Mac libraries. Also, for the back of the there's no new development. There's ex external developers are working on this stuff, but it's not merged yet. It's just several bugs they found has been merged in, but that's about it. Yeah, but nothing that directly really impacts the Mac libraries, right? Yeah, right. <clears throat> All right, on the QA side. Uh, yeah, so I'm not going to go to all of these, uh, but in general, um, there was a bunch of tests that started failing recently. Uh, some due to changes in those behavior, um, some were due to bugs, um, so we saw bugs for those. Um, we've added, uh, since we had an issue with the form cluster, 
uh, script. We added a test for that. Um, and then some improvements to, uh, more improvements to how we display our test results, um, setting up for MS 112, and some error handling and some of our scripts. Uh, in terms of in-progress stuff, um, we're still investigating the issue with our environment in terms of SSHing into our Docker images. There's some mismatch of um, some tools that they don't communicate, but uh, that's kind of on the back burner. Um, still working on ISSU tests um, and then expanding our Docker test for more functionality. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, and then um, I don't remember when these are updated, but there's uh, 16 resolved bugs this sprint and 20 created for a total of 209 open bugs. Um, and then these uh, bugs that we added here are bugs that were in either the bug scrub list um, or bugs that we created this sprint. Didn't you say the last one was fixed by? I don't remember what change it was. The last one is the one that Thomas was talking about. Okay. I, yeah, that, I see that one on STC also. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping it's the same thing as the stuck in pending ads. Yeah, so, I think that's yeah. the same one. <clears throat> um, yeah, as far as I know, these are all still open. So I'm, hope, I'm hoping the pending ad and then the link discovery will be closed shortly. Uh, I'm, I was having a difficult time uh, replicating the should have completely failed to replicate the device annotation one. Okay. So mm -hmm. I may need some, some help, but I'm okay. currently not paying attention to it because I think the, yeah. I'm paying more attention to the link one. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And uh, so the MagPy review um, session, as well as a combined <coughs> session of MagPy review and 19 day release planning, is going to be uh, done on. Uh, next week, December 6th. I believe that's Wednesday, I think so. Uh, there will be two sessions, one from 9 to 10 in the morning and another one from 4 to 6 in the afternoon. Um, uh, just as a reminder, Onos is moving to a four-month release cycle, so, which means the 19 year will release in the middle of April 2018. And so please, as you saw, preparing mentally for the release process, consider that as part of an increased time uh, considering the work to be done. All right, now for the fun part, for the demos. <laughs> okay, um, can I share the... Yeah, make sure it Okay. Okay, um, is the text good enough? Please. Okay. Um, okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to show the Fabry.p4 work. Uh, so, so currently, I, uh, we designed a, a pipeline by using P4 called Fabry.p4. The main goal. Uh, okay. Uh, is to support Chinese use case, uh, and this try to simplify the uh, pipeline we use. Currently, we use the OFDB pipeline, and uh, uh, it's a little bit complex uh, because we need to handle in uh, several uh, group training uh, stuff. So, um, basically, uh, cur currently we we support uh, some basic functionality like uh, uh, host location detector, link link, link location, uh, sorry, link link uh, status. And also L2 and L3 unicast. Uh, so let me do a very quick demo. So here is the uh, configuration, network configuration file for the current Trellis demo. So we have several interfaces, uh, just like the uh, normal Trellis use case we use. Uh, for example, we have an interface um, for different subnets with different uh, uh, VLAN. And we have segment routing uh, configuration for different uh, switch. For example, we have uh, two at, uh, this is a two by two leaf spine switch uh, fabric topology. So we have two uh, leaf 
for two edge uh, a two edge router, and then each edge router have different MAC address and also the uh, SID for the MPRS routing table, and uh, yeah, so so this is the configuration. Um, so basically, we just need to uh, activate several applications. For example, uh, so let me step by step uh, activate the application to show the function. So first, we need to support some basic um, that host provide host provider and LD provider. Also, we need to activate uh, BMV2 driver. Uh, yes, we need to use BMV2 to, to simulate this uh, P4 switch. Also, we need to support the uh, deactivate the fabric pipeline. So, just need to activate um, uh, pipelines fabric. After uh, we activate this applications, uh, we can connect uh, the switch to the Onos controller. So, um, did you need segment routing too? The segment? Uh, I just want to. Okay. I can show the uh, host data and the okay. data first, then activate the segment routing. Uh, so, so here we have a mainnet script. Uh, from there's a repository called uh, routing. Uh, it's also in the uh, GitHub uh, called routing, and we have script called trace p four. So just do do um, trace p four and uh, control IP. Uh, so it will create four uh, two by two list by uh, topology, and uh, we can see. Uh, wait, something's wrong. Ah. Uh, let me re re restart the photos. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's not my fault. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically this top, uh, this script will, will create uh, two leaves to spine. And uh, just wait a few seconds. I think it's something related to the floor, floor tables, something. Um, store stuff. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can fix that. Are you a master? Uh, master. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So just wait for a second. So, um, I think. So what I was going to demo is uh, basically just make uh, our grade uh, for host and make them ping each other. So also we condense two subnets with two uh, different. We then config. Um, yeah, so just uh, wait it. Uh, SSD should be able to find it now. Okay. So let me activate this again. Fabric, uh, host selection provider, LD provider. Uh, also, uh, it can support um, the box up. Because currently, uh, the trace, uh, the fabric that people haven't support the uh, uh, L2 broadcast. Uh, so currently, we use L2 broadcast to broadcast the up request uh, to the send subnet. Uh, but currently, we don't support it on people, so we need to activate the uh, proxy up. OK. OK. Um, let me restart this again. Should be works. OK, great. So, so we can see uh, there are four devices. And also, you can see uh, floors. Uh, we're trying to install LDP, uh, BDDP, and the ARP. Uh, uh, the, the selector is this, and the 
well pumped through the controller. And uh, um, so, um, yeah, this edit. OK, great. So we can see there are links. Uh, so this is a uh, two by two list binding. So you should, we should have uh, four by directional links. So it's eight links. And uh, also, uh, currently there's no host because we haven't sent up request. So uh, we can just simply generate some uh, uh, up request. Uh, so, so for the host one and host two, I yeah, send some nets. So, so the host one should be able to receive the up reply from host two because we enable the proxy up and the host three and uh, ping host four. So after this, uh, we should be able to see four host with uh, uh, these two hosts is send some net 10 0 10 0 search 24 these two are 10 0 20 uh, 0 search 24 and uh, next we push the uh, uh, network configuration so we can get the see the interfaces here so currently there's uh, only few flaws for the link detection the host detection and uh, there's no groups here. So next is we activate the second routing application. So we can see there's um, logs and the issue running. Um, so we can see there's some groups pending edit. Uh, let me make it quick because currently we use the porting uh, mechanism to pull the uh, group status and the uh, flow status for a few seconds. Next, it's, it's low. It's like twenty seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah, so we can the polling period for groups. Uh, we can make it much <laughs> faster to set the time like ten second. Uh, set <coughs> groups for ten second. So yeah, so all the groups added. Oops, oh, there's not. What? Hmm. I think something something's wrong. <sighs> okay, this that is Mr. Uh, 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 you must not be true. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's strange. It's probably BNB two crashing. Yeah, BNB two sometimes is crashing, but yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I think. Um, yeah, but at least I'll do in case for yeah, because the one one of VM will not crash, so she works. But um yeah, but uh I think we will check offline. Uh but basically issue works. <laughs> yeah, most yeah. of the times we encounter problems with the switch itself being you know, because the yeah before and time support there it's it's really work in progress. Mm -hmm. So depending on the type of messages we send, the switch might explode. Yeah. yeah, yes. Sometimes we install too much for us yeah. and the groups. But uh, uh, I test it is she works. Right. Yeah. That's cool. And cool. so that would be the basis for the next phase demo, right? Effectively. Yeah, the fabric, yeah. Mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Yeah, also I'm still working on putting the putting it to the Tofino chip, Tofino switch, because uh, currently there's some uh, limitation of the Tokyo chip, for example, the mesh key size. And I don't think the, we can say the limitations of the Tokyo chip. Yeah, no, I understand. <laughs> but uh, so, quick, quick, quick question: Is there any genetic uh, similarity or uh, uh, genetic base between the Fabric D4 and Tor D4? Uh, I was doing similar things. Oh, but they do similar thing. Fabric D4 as much as many more capabilities. Features. Yes, okay. features. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, yeah. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Would you mind, uh, Carmen, would you mind passing the control to John for the second part of the demo, which is the ISSU bit? Thank you. Bigger, better, faster. 
right. Yeah, so I'm going to uh, just real quick demo uh, sort of the work that's been done in ISSU. It's not going to be as cool as the last one. But, uh, anyways, so just to sort of show uh, how sort of ISSU operates. So we have a set of commands. So if you look at, for example, the notes command, you can see that Previously, this didn't exist. There's a version attached to uh, the nodes in the cluster, and this is used for ISSU. So we added this uh, ISSU command. So this is what's described in the in the ISSU protocol. Uh, basically, there's a set of commands, and it upgrade commit rollback status version that uh, you use to control upgrading a cluster. And I'll show how that's done. So like currently, uh, when you just log into a cluster, this is a three-node cluster. Uh, you run ISSU status, ISSU, ISSU is not active, and the current version that's running is 1.13.0. So I don't want to go through the commands individually because it takes so much currently. We haven't automated the process, but this is an example uh, STC test that actually runs an upgrade. And so you can see from this test that the way that it's done basically is there's two phases. There's a phase one group and a phase two group. And in phase one, basically we go through a minority of the cluster, shut down the cluster, uninstall it, uh, push the new the new updated code, install it, start it. And then uh, the important part is that what that sort of creates is you'll have a minority of the cluster that's running a new version and a majority that's running the old version. And then the way that you switch between the two versions is by running this ISSU upgrade command. What that does is, what I'll show in the demo when I run this test is, uh, you'll see Mastership before the upgrade is running on the old version, and then when it's time to upgrade the cluster, we'll get switched over to the new version, and then we upgrade the rest of the nodes. So if I run this test, and then, for example, ah, dang it, I want to do it. So which versions are you running here? So this test actually does sort of, it, it, fakes, ver it fakes a version change. So it really is just, this particular test is just changing the Onos version without changing any of the code. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and that's just the test that, I'll explain what actually happens also. Right, so. So what happens during this upgrade is, like I said, it'll upgrade a minority of cluster. And basically what it's doing is creating two separate isolated clusters that have isolated state. And what that allows is uh, for the, the, new, the new version to make any changes that it wants to the state of the cluster without affecting what's running and what's controlling the network. And then once mastership changes, immediately just by switching mastership the up upgraded state and basically this allows uh, any virtually any changes to make to be made to the state of the system uh, in a new version versus older right so let's watch this yeah so this is shutting down a node uh, we should can't see this very well yeah gonna be smaller so you can see the first node SC doesn't have anything uh, it says Shulamsky. Yeah, so this is shutting down the third node, but and it'll shut down one node, and then it'll switch mastership from those two nodes over to the third node, and then it'll upgrade the rest of the other two nodes. So yeah, right now it's upgrading first. This is actually done sort of backwards. It's upgrading node three. So once that's started, we should see it run ISSU upgrade, and then that'll switch mastership.
So, so there you go. Third so it was all of the work. Yeah, ran it. ISS to upgrade, and then as the other nodes are upgraded, you should see mastership balance as one of the other nodes. And then once, once all of them have been upgraded, once all the software has been upgraded, all the nodes will be then. And then, the, and then part, of, part of ISSU also is it's possible if something goes wrong during this, pro this process, you can also run the ISSU rollback command, and that just switches mastership from the new version back to the old version. Then you can, uh, Restore the old code. Yeah, so this is upgrading the first node, and then we'll do the second node and then commit it. So yeah, shut down my node. Yeah, that's not correct. Oh yeah, and the other thing that you can look at is how oh, things do right now. So if you do uh, nodes again, so this is the oh, yeah, you, this is where you would have seen the yeah. So you would have seen ver different versions running in the cluster. But you can play with that. Uh, yeah, so this would have shown uh, the first two nodes running uh, without the upgraded suffix, and then uh, but now they're all running the new version. Okay. So basically, at this point in time, we have the ability to do portable serialization, uh, at least to make sure that the line, that the nodes run into different versions of the software, and at least uh, serialize and serialize the same yeah. objects. We have the uh, upgrade coordination to be able to sort of manage the life cycle of the, of the nodes running different versions to coordinate the overall process. Yeah. So what we still need to do in the future will be to make sure we sweep through all the storage make sure, or actually that would be ongoing responsibility right? yeah, so for each of the storage to make sure they can be upgraded, right? So unknown, the big unknown here is that this works pretty well. It's not totally stable yet. There's still some bugs to work out in the next release, which will, the plan is to call it stable after the next release, or in the next release. But part of what we need to figure out is how much maintenance overhead this is and exactly how we're going to maintain it, because if someone goes into a an application and changes the way that state is stored, that affects mm -hmm. how that affects what happens during an upgrade. Somebody can easily break an upgrade. And so there's a lot of questions about whose responsibility is it is to ensure that upgrades aren't broken, how we ensure that upgrades aren't broken. We have to have uh, sufficient testing. I, I think the big thing in the next release is to figure out how to test and ensure that uh, any cluster can be upgraded from 1.12 to 1.13. So, um, yeah, I completely agree that the need for regression for, for, for driving the upgrade process as the release, as we roll towards the release and to make sure that, and up, uh, uh, but ultimately it should be the application responsible to be upgradable. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it really can't participate yeah, in the release. Right. Uh, one of the things we have actually talked about is potential for adding like a flag to applications to say whether they're upgradable. Because mm -hmm. one of the things that the ISSC protocol can do is when you run like ISSU init, it can make sure the applications that can't be upgraded to the next version are uh, deactivated yeah. before the upgrade. That's one way to solve problems with having a lot of applications mm -hmm. and the potential to break. Because we don't want one application to break the whole thing. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I agree. That's very cool. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Hello, Engage. You can, can you share your screen? Yeah. Um, yeah. He has a full uh, Yes, so. <laughs> yeah, so finally the BMT V2 not crash. Uh, so uh, you can see, uh, so these four uh, blocks down below uh, is host one. Uh, this one is host one ping, host three, host two ping, host four, host three ping, host two, host four ping, host one. Uh, it works, and also we can use the GUI to see. Uh, there's. Oh, very good. Uh, can I zoom in? Oh. You, you, what? Uh, let me refresh. Much, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oops. Uh, how can I reset? Uh, there's a reset. I'm going to reset. Uh, this R, one. Yeah, yeah. R. Okay. So, um, so basically, um, 
yeah, so there's um, host one, host two. I think there's some problem of uh, port counterparts. Uh, and they will use the uh, their so called extra profile groups to do ECMP cross uh, different spy using NPR stable matching on spy uh, to different leaf. Also, you can see there are some uh, groups uh, with two actions for use, use of this ECMP and uh, for rows uh, installed, uh, well, uh, trusted by the Fabric Pipeliner and uh, this uh, installed by the, uh, wait, sorry. Uh, second routing will generate uh, objectives for objectives and uh, send to the Fabric Pipeliner and translate to groups and photos and install to the switches. The cool yeah. thing is that you can see the, the name of the P4 table there, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we use, realize that the pipeline is custom. Yeah, now we yeah, use the, the table. Yeah. yeah, also we have uh, yeah. a PipeConf pipe uh, view to show uh, for each table have different match fields, bit wave, and the actions for these tables. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have a SCL table to do the wildcard match. Yeah. This was also enhanced, right? A little bit, maybe some later this year. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the 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 pipe count view is uh, we create uh, before the day one for free demo. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so this the demo of February people. All right. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's it. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Uh, again, a reminder, uh, December 6th is uh, 